In this movie, we'll take a look at the simple tap event. So let's start by creating either an Air for Android project or Air for iOS project. It depends on what device are you uh, programming for. And we're going to go for Air for Android. And I'll simply create, as usual, a simple circle. Convert it to a symbol and give it an instance name of circle. Now I'll create a new layer called Actions and hit F9 to open up my Actions panel or Option F9 on a Mac. The first thing I'll need to do is to tell Flash that I will use touch events. So we need to write this piece of code which is multi touch dot input mode is equal to multi touch input mode dot touch underscore point semicolon to end your statement and now I'll basically add an event listener to my circle that will listen for a touch event so circle or you know what let's add an event listener to the stage instead so stage dot add event listener is going to be a touch event oops touch event dot touch or uppercase underscore begin then a comma then the function will be called begin touch underscore begin means the beginning of my touch the moment I place my finger on the screen so the moment I place my finger on the screen the function begin will be fired off so now function begin again the event variable e colon touch event then colon void and then our set of braces <coughs> whenever I touch the stage I want the circle to go directly to where my finger is so circle dot x will be equal to e dot stage capital X that means that the x position of the circle will be equal to my fingers position on the screen relative to the stage that's what this means and again I want the y position to be the same as my fingers y position as well so circle dot y will be equal to e dot stage y with a capital y semicolon and let's reduce the alpha property of the circle whenever i touch it to half so circle dot alpha will be equal to 0 0.5 semicolon to end your statement and let's test our movie in the mobile simulator control test movie in air debug launcher mobile whenever you click this every time you click uh, you hit control enter it will open the last debugger you've used so if I let's say click the air desktop debugger and again hit control enter it will open up the uh, mo the desktop uh, emulator while well, if I hit control in test movie then in air debug launcher and again hit control enter it will start off in the mobile debugger now if I click here I notice that nothing is happening that's because I haven't turned on my touch layer yet so go to uh, the touch and gestures panel and click on touch layer here I can uh, adjust the opacity of the touch layer and we're going to use the click and drag under the touch 
uh, group here. So wherever I, and you can see that this is working because my mouse has some red, uh, yellow circle on it. This represents the finger that's hovering above the, the screen. And you see that the circle is at full opacity here. If I click wherever on the stage, the circle becomes half opaque and its X position and Y position are equal to my, my mouse cursor, which is on mobile will be a finger. So wherever I click, it goes to where the mouse is. But I can't click and drag yet because I haven't defined a drag function yet. It's only a tap event. So let's do that now. Let's close the emulator, close the output panel, and then add another event listener to the stage. Copy this bit of code here, paste it. Stage dot add event listener touch event dot touch underscore move, all uppercase. And the function will be called move. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is what happens when I click and drag. So this event listener is waiting for a drag, a click and drag uh, event. Copy this function, paste it to save ourselves some typing. The function name will be move. It's a touch event circle dot x equals e dot stage x circle dot y equals e dot stage y and we want to keep this uh, uh, th want to keep the circle at half opacity again control enter to test now see that wherever i click after i turn on my touch layer wherever i click the circle instantly becomes half opaque and i can move and drag my circle wherever I click on the stage okay now let's create an a touch end function that's when I remove my finger off the screen again we'll again we'll copy this we'll copy this bit of code here paste it then it's going to be touch underscore end that's for the end of the touch uh, event the function will be called end again copy this paste function end touch event circle dot x same all the same except for now the alpha property is going to be equal to one so whenever so basically all of this function does is whenever I remove my finger it returns the alpha property to 1. Control enter to test. Touch and layer event, touch layer, sorry, touch and gesture event, touch layer. Now if I click it's half opaque, if I remove my finger it becomes fully opaque. So again half opaque, fully opaque and I can click and drag to move my circle. But there's a problem here. The circle could go off stage. So, so let's put some boundaries for this circle now. Okay, I'll put a, I'll put the boundaries inside each one of these functions. So I want it to be bounded within the stage. The first time I click, that's because if we see here, I can make the circle go outside the stage if I simply click here. It goes off the stage and I can also drag it off the stage and I can end the drag uh, event off the stage. So I want to, to bound the, mo the, the movement of the circle within the three functions. So write a conditional statement if circle dot x is greater than stage dot stage width sorry that's a dot here not a comma minus circle dot width over 2 that means that if the x position of my circle is greater than the stage width 
minus half of the width of the circle. That's because I want it to be bounded not from the center of the circle, but from the very edge of the circle. We'll see what that, uh, how that works whenever, when we test our movie. So if the x position of the circle is greater than the stage width minus the width of my circle, that's a cap uppercase W, I'm sorry about that. No, that's not an uppercase W, that's a lowercase W with a D. In this case, circle dot x will be equal to stage dot stage width minus circle dot width over 2. So basically, if the x position of the circle is greater than the stage width minus the width of the circle, then the x position of the circle will be equal to stage width minus circle's width over 2. Semicolon to end your statement. Now else, if circle dot x is less than circle dot width over 2. That means if the x position of the circle is less than half the width of the circle of the circle, sorry. So basically if the circle goes off the left side of the stage, then circle dot x will be equal to circle dot width over 2. So in this case, the x position of the circle will be equal to the width of the circle over 2. Now that's because the registration point of our circle is exactly in the center of the circle. So the x position will start from the center of the circle. So if the circle is at 0, 0 position, it will be in the upper left side of the stage in this manner. So now the circle is at 0, 0 position. And if the x position of the circle is equal to, the, to half the width of the circle, it will be something like this. That's exactly one, what we wanted to do. If the x position gets uh, less than the width, becomes less than the width of the circle. Okay, back to our actions panel. So else if circle.x is less than circle.width over 2, circle.x is equal to circle.width over 2. Now for the y position, if circle.y is greater than stage dot stage height that's there's an i there height minus circle dot y uh, sorry dot width dot height over two then similarly if the if the y position of the circle is greater than the height of the stage minus the height of the circle, then circle dot y will be equal to stage dot stage height minus circle dot height over two. Semicolon and your statement. Now else if Now it's just getting repetitive. Circle dot y is less than circle dot height over two. Then circle dot y will be equal to circle dot height over two. I want this condition to be set, uh, to be the same for all of the functions. So I'll simply copy this piece of code and paste it here and here. Cross our fingers, control enter to test. Good, no errors. So let's go the, to the touch and gestures panel, click on the touch layer, click and drag 
and if we click and drag all works out if we click and see that the circle does not go off the stage that is good so if we drag now again that is perfect if we release our mouse it even stays within, within the stage that works for all the boundaries of the stage which is exactly what we want now if I release my mouse the circle becomes fully opaque very good just to show you why I placed this condition in all three of my functions if I let's say comment this this bit out oops now test my movie I'll see that it's still bounded but if I release my mouse with my mouse in this position let's say it gets off the stage that's because the circle is no longer bounded for the end function that is whenever I release my mouse so I'll just remove those and this is basically one of the touch events that we can use whenever we're on mobile.